the Lord be with you. Oral Leonard Hirschheiser IV. Now that is a mouthful of a name, isn't it? It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. In fact, it sounds like the name of a chess player or maybe a high school student on the tennis team wearing a v-neck sweater. Yes, my name is Oral, Oral Hirschheiser IV. What it doesn't sound like is the name of a famous athlete, but that is exactly what Oral Hirschheiser was. He played baseball. He was blessed with a great arm and became a pitcher, eventually making it to the major leagues. But even in the majors, there is a lot of learning that has to take place. Oral had a problem. He was fearful of the men that faced him when he took the pitcher's mound. He was in awe of these hitters. He would go out and pitch and nibble around the corners trying to fool the batters. It wasn't working. Tommy Lasorda, the famous coach of the Dodgers, knew that he had all the goods, knew that Oral Hirschheiser had what it takes to go right after these batters and strike them out. So during a game in 1984, Lasorda strolled out to the pitcher's mound and he told Oral Leonard Hirschheiser IV that he was going to give him a brand new name. Bulldog. You're a bulldog, and whenever you hear me say your name, Bulldog, I want you to go after these guys. Oral Hirschheiser called it the Sermon on the Mound. He was no longer Oral. He had been given a new name, Bulldog. It changed everything he ever thought about playing the game, and it changed his entire career his Hall of Fame career. How often do we witness people having their names changed by God in the Bible? Abram became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. Hosea to Joshua. Jacob to Israel. Simon to Cephas. In the Bible, Changed names represented changed identities. Peter, you bumbling, temper-losing, so not politically correct disciple, you are now the rock, the foundation upon which I shall build my church. A new identity, a new mission. Saul, persecutor and killer of my people, you are now Paul, and you will spread my church to the four corners of the earth. A new identity, a new mission. We live in a world where there are thousands of voices clamoring for our attention every day, trying to shape us and define us, trying to tell us what we can't live without and what we must live with, what we must have and what we must not have, what is beautiful and what is not, what is in and what is out, making sure we know who deserves our vote and who doesn't, how we should raise our children, spend our money, and how we should think. The voices are loud, even in the church. I have spoken with several pastors new to the journey of their calling who felt lost among the voices. The chair of council wants one thing. The most generous contributor in my church wants something entirely different. And the lay leader says I must absolutely do a third thing. What am I supposed to do when everyone is telling me something different? It's hard to please an audience of so many people. As the old saying goes, you can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people 
all of the time. Fortunately, the Bible makes it clear that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. We are not called to listen to the claptrap of thousands of voices. We are called to please an audience of one, to hear the voice of the shepherd. How do I know? Because all of our names have been changed. We have been given a new identity, a new mission, and a new name, Christian. The voice is more than a television show. The voice is our reason for life and for living. Are you listening? Amen.